RTCChannel5.com, streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, audio and soon-to-be video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Brant's in the studio this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, thanks. Thanks for coming over. Nice to have you back with us. Ryan Johnson is also here from the Fulton County Community Foundation, and we're going to catch up on foundation activities. Good morning, right, Tom. How are you? It's, it's a nice day out there. It is a nice day. I think day. it had anything to do with that eclipse. Uh, that probably, the weather has yeah, changed brought, since that brought happened. Brought nice weather after the eclipse. Yeah, and there just you go. Brought so it right on through. That's by all we golly. have to do to get nice fall <laughs> weather. So Somebody said after the eclipse, you know, that was so cool. We should have one of these every year. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we can work on that. I'm not sure that that request would be fulfilled. but <laughs> That's going to be a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> Somewhere in the universe. <laughs> Speaking of universe, how about hey, the universe of the foundation? Well, we've got a lot of things going on right now at the foundation. Um, of course, um, we have available right now the Fulton County Lilly Community Scholarship application. Um, that is available um, right now on our website, nicf.org. The deadline for that is September 1st. So students have about a couple weeks to get that completed. If they have not um, started on it, I'd encourage them to take a look at that. Um, it has a lot of information that obviously things like academics, but also um, important community service, community involvement, work experience, um, things like that that students have been involved in. Um, and one of the biggest things, um, letters of recommendation. Okay. So students need to, if they haven't asked already or reminded their um, folks that they've asked to write a letter of recommendation, I'd encourage them to um, do that. Um, like I said, the deadline is September 1st. Um, for that, um, and we will be letting the recipient know by the end of the year. Um, that was part of this is the second year that we've moved up that deadline. Um, Lily Endowment helps provide those scholarships, and they they wanted to ha let kids know earlier so that they could make a better plan because sometimes financials are the reason for a choice of school, and so they wanted to remove that um, that. Hindrance. Okay. If, if somebody is chosen as a Lily Scholar, they want to give them plenty of time to be able to find the school that they really want to go to, not just the one that they can afford at the time. So, so again, um, applications are online, nicf.org. You can click on the Fulton County Scholarship page and see um, the application there. So Better get on it. Better get on that. That's right. You still have some time, but it's coming shortly. So, um, something else as far as scholarships, um, preschool scholarships, we still have those available. Um, I know most of the preschools in the area have already started, but if somebody is still interested in getting their child in preschool, then these scholarships are available for um, pre-K. So the, the year before they would go to kindergarten, um, we have a number of good preschools in our area to encourage folks, um, if you have are interested in that, still trying to get your student involved in a preschool, um, check with the preschool if the financial aspect of it is a concern. Um, the preschools have applications. Um, if they have questions or if parents have questions, they can always get in contact with us. Um, but we want to help remove that financial burden if, if that's an issue why a student couldn't go to preschool. Um, so those, those are available. This is um, going to be the fifth year that we've offered scholarships, and it's just really wonderful to see how many students um, have benefited from this. Very so, important to a lot of folks. Isn't it, it is, and getting that education started off, we we hear from kindergarten teachers, and they say, you know what, we really need our kindergarten students, maybe that just started this last couple of weeks, to be able to be reading by Christmas time. Sure. And you think if somebody doesn't know the alphabet, doesn't know colors, doesn't know numbers, it's very difficult to catch up with that um, by Christmas time. So um, that preschool can get, just get students started off on a, on the right foot with their education. So I'd encourage parents to check that out if they're um, if they're still thinking about that. Okay. If you need help finding, getting in contact with a preschool in the area, um, give us a holler. We can um, provide you with contact information for the area preschools that we know of, and um, we'd love to help be a part of um, the solution for that. So, something else that's coming up, um, and this isn't a community foundation thing, but it's um, we have a group of service providers that have been um, working on some specific areas, and one of them is poverty. Um, and so um, Jason C., the chaplain at Woodlawn Hospital, and his group that's been um, talking about that um, issue 
are working on bringing a Bridges Out of Poverty workshop to Fulton County. Um, what this workshop is, it's um, based on a book that was written by Dr. Ruby Payne a number of years ago, and it, it helps organizations that work with individuals that are in poverty um, better serve their clientele. So if somebody's, somebody is involved in that area, um, this workshop helps kind of give some ideas as far as programs and ideas of, of how to better serve folks um, and make it better for the organization and the individual being served. Um, so that workshop is going to be held um, at the um, Fulton County Fairgrounds out by the Extension Office on September 6th and 7th. Um, and today is actually the um, registration deadline for the base price. Um, both days are nine to four um, workshops, and um, it's sixty-five dollars if somebody registers okay. today. Um, Karen Hinshaw, who is the extension educator out of Huntington County, will be providing the program. Um, and her contact information, um, if you want to find out more or potentially register for this, um, is the website is extension.purdue.edu forward slash Huntington. I know that's a, that's a lot to remember. So again, extension.purdue.edu forward slash Huntington. Um, you can get her on the phone at um, area code 260 358 Four eight two six. You've got um, that information. We've right got in that information. So if, it up quite that yes, fast. if somebody's sure. interested, um, you can give me a call. If if you know Jason out at Woodlawn Hospital, you can give him a call. Um, either of us would be able to um, put you in contact with Karen or provide you with information about the workshop. Um, after today, you can still register. Okay. But the price goes up. Um, so if you've thought about if there's somebody listening that's thought about it, I'd encourage them to get registered today. Um, a really good program as far as um, just talking about how to better serve and be more efficient um, with the resources that we have. Okay. Um, so I'd encourage folks, if you haven't attended that or if you're interested in that, um, to do that. Well, today I wanted to talk about, we've, we've had some guests on the past few months, and um, a while back we talked about some of the basics about the Community Foundation. Um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the funds that we have within the foundation. Of course, the first thing that we usually are known for is scholarships. Exactly. Most people understand what a scholarship is. It's created in memory of somebody to... Um, help students that may have similar characteristics of the person that the scholarship was created in memory or honor of go to school. A couple of the other types of funds that we have, um, donor advised funds and field of interest funds. And these, um, to me, these are some of the really fun funds that we have at the foundation. Is that a run on words? I'm not <laughs> sure if I can say that three times fast, but, um, Donor advised funds, um, it's really neat. Um, in Fulton County, we have 24 of these funds. And basically, it's, it's the title, Donor Advised Fund. A donor sure. creates an endowment fund with the foundation, and then they can make suggestions every year as far as where those funds go. And it really creates some interesting flexibility for donors. Um, like I said, we have 24 funds. And it is up to the donor to make those suggestions as far as what type of charitable needs, either in or out of our community, um, those need, those can support. Um, so it's a really neat way for a donor to make a contribution. And then every year, with it being an endowment, those earnings, they can direct those earnings um, towards some charitable needs. Um, just to kind of give you an example, um, one of them that we've created um, was the Finky Family Community Development Fund, and that's a um, the Finky Family Kiwana Metal mm -hmm. Specialties, um, and they are involved in a lot of automation. And recently, they were able to grant to um, the cast and I think it's called the Robo Comets, um, the elementary robotics team that went to the world finals um, in their first year. And it, it was a neat opportunity for them to match up something that they have done all of their lives with a group of students that are coming up. 
and it's it's a neat way to make that connection where it's not restricted to a certain need or a certain area it's as those needs arise okay and so sometimes we'll have some families that will create a fund and they'll say these are kind of the areas that we really want to know about Um, another great one is the phil dalton memorial fund exactly Um, ben was able to set that up when his um, father passed away and of course um, phil if you if you knew him he was a a great friend of youth sports he was indeed um, baseball, football, golf, softball, um, just really encouraging youth in our community. So um, that fund has been able to support a number of things, anywhere from the Youth Football League to the um, Youth Baseball and Youth Softball um, in our communities and also do some things beyond that. But it's it's neat to see how Phil, even though unfortunately we lost him way too early, is still able to impact youth sports in our community through this donor advised fund. Um, and so it's neat to see some of these needs. And then we have others um, that they just say, we'll, we'll look at these needs as they come up. There may not be a specific area that we want to grant to, but um, we would like to help with this. And really the neat thing about a donor advised fund is you can compare this to maybe, say, a private foundation. Okay. So if you think of somebody like Bill and Melinda Gates, um, very wealthy they have their own private foundation. Um, but folks like you and me may not have that and in, be independently wealthy, but these donor advised funds can often play that role where you don't have to go through the process of setting up a separate organization. This falls underneath the, the community foundation's guidelines and all of our things like our audit and our financials, our investment. So the donor doesn't have to worry about those individual okay. pieces of it. They just get to do the fun part. They get to be the one that recommends, hey, I want to support youth softball, or I want to support robotics, or I want to support this need that's going on. Um, so we have a lot of people that set those up as as individuals, and they can grant out to needs. Or um, one thing that we see as popular is churches. Folks grant from these donor-advised funds to support their churches or programs within their churches. Okay. So, it's a very idea. it's a very simple solution for an individual that may not have the wealth that says you know what I can start my own private foundation and wants to doesn't want to deal with all those responsibilities involved in that but wants to make a difference in the in the community and so it's neat to see that um, and there's some really flexible things too we have some um, what I would say multi generational families that may have two or three generations involved in these donor advised funds and. Sometimes they'll get together and they'll just talk about, hey, what would we like to do in the community? What's important to us as a family? And bring some of those charitable giving values into the conversation as a family and be able to do it in a fun way that they can grant out to um, different causes in the community that are that are near and dear to them. Um, something else that we have, um, we have a few local companies that have also started donor advised funds with the foundation that... Um, they instead of having their own private foundation as a company, they um, do it through the community foundation. Okay. So just some Good examples: um, Pike Lumber Company, Rochester Telephone Company, um, First Federal Savings Bank have all created um, endowments within the foundation, donor advised funds. So they, um, as they get things in their community. Um, they'll make requests and say, we want to support this project and it can come from that donor advised fund. So a really neat way for um, them to be able to support needs that are in the community without having to have their own separate private foundation. So um, those donor advised funds are really fun and and we get donors ranging anywhere from um, really knowing this is specifically what I want to do to anywhere to donors that will say, let us know when you hear about projects. We get calls on a on a regular basis about things going on and we'll pass those on. If we know a donor is interested in a sure. specific area, we'll pass those types of requests on to them. And um, or we can just pass along any any random requests that that may be interested. We try and work with donors. If they don't have an idea about what they'd like to do, we can we can help connect them with projects that they may be interested in. So it's really a fun thing, and it's really a um, a simple way for somebody to make 
some charitable gifts and then be able to be involved with needs in the community. So, so those are donor advised funds and we'll say field of interest funds in the sake of time sure, for another program. Idea. Those right. are another fun type of, right. of funds, but um, those donor advised funds are really a great alternative to a private foundation and can be used um, very creatively. We even have some donors that may have, created those through an estate plan like a will and then said you know what i want my children to be involved in this at some point in the future um there's there's all kind of creative ways that donor advised funds can be used in our community to um, support needs that are going on so so if somebody's interested in that we'd always love to talk to them about how how that could fit into your charitable giving and and potential into future um, philanthropic plans okay. um, for supporting our community so well, just a reminder, of course, the Lilly Community Scholarship application is available right now. The deadline is September 1st. Um, preschool scholarships, if you haven't enrolled in a preschool and you're interested in that, um, I'd encourage folks to do that. Um, the Bridges Out of Poverty workshop coming up on September 7th and 8th. Um, if you have questions about that or would like to talk to us about a donor advised fund or potentially any of the types of funds that um, we can help with, we'd always be happy to talk to you. Of course, our website, nicf.org. You can find us on Facebook um, under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call, 224-3223, or stop by our office at 715 Main Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any ideas you may have for the community. Brian Johnson, as always, thank you. Good information, and uh, keep up the good work for Fulton County and for the Community Foundation. All right. Thanks for having us. Thank you. 